morning, Storytime friends. Here we are at the beach. Oh, it's a beautiful day. The water looks so awesome. I can't wait. I'm supposed to meet Mr. Chase. Let's see, I think he might be down the beach, so I'll be taking a beach walk a little later and hopefully we'll cross paths. But I've got a song we're gonna start with. So I'm gonna ask some questions and you're gonna answer, yes, ma'am. So I ask you a question and you say, yes, ma'am. And then there's some actions too to go with it. I'll show you, follow along. Shall we go to the beach? Yes, ma'am. Shall we take along a peach? Yes, ma'am. Oh, how shall we go? We'll drive our car. Can you do this? How shall we go? We'll drive our car. Shall we walk on the sand? Yes, ma'am. And will you hold my hand? Yes, ma'am. Oh, how shall we walk? Hurry, hurry, hurry. How shall we walk? Hurry, hurry, hurry. Shall we wear our shades? Yes, ma'am. To block the sun's bright rays? Yes, ma'am. Oh, where should we wear them? Over our eyes. Where should we wear them? Over our eyes. Shall we put on lotion? Yes, ma'am. When we're down by the ocean? Yes, ma'am. Oh, how shall we do it? Rub, rub, rub. How shall we do it? Rub, rub, rub. Shall we swim in the water? Yes, ma'am. Just like a little otter. Yes, ma'am. Oh, how shall we do it? Splish, splish, splash. Can you do this? How shall we do it? Splish, splish, splash. Will we get sunburned? No, ma'am. After all we've learned, no, ma'am. Oh, why won't it happen? Because we're too smart. Why won't it happen? Because we're too smart. Okay, friends. I think we're ready for our first book. We talked about how to get to the beach, and this is the story that we're gonna start with. How will we get to the beach? This is a guessing game, and so I'd like you to try to guess along with this one. This book is by Bridget Luciani and Eve Tharlett. She drew the pictures. One beautiful summer day, Roxanne decided to go to the beach. Everything she wanted to take with her could be counted on the fingers of one hand. The turtle, the umbrella, the thick book of stories, the ball, and of course, her baby. But the car wouldn't start. Looks like there's some trouble under the hood there. Then we'll take to the, the bus to the beach, said Roxanne, but something couldn't go with them. What was it? What's one of the things that's missing? Hmm, do you remember? <gasps> the little green turtle. Animals weren't allowed on the bus. We can't go to the beach without the turtle, cried Roxanne. Then we'll ride our bike to the beach, she said, but something couldn't go with them. What was it? Can you tell what's missing? <laughs> Look, the turtle's on her head like a helmet. The orange spotted ball. The ball wouldn't fit on the bicycle. We can't go to the beach without the ball, cried Roxanne. Then we'll ride our skateboard to the beach, she said, but something couldn't go with them. What was it? The big yellow umbrella. Roxanne didn't have a free hand to hold it. We can't go to the beach without the umbrella, cried Roxanne. Then we'll ride our kayak to the beach, she said. But something couldn't go with them. What was it? The thick blue book of stories. The kayak was very wobbly and the book might get wet. We can't go to the beach without the book, cried Roxanne. Then we'll fly in a balloon to the beach, she said, but something couldn't go with them. What was it? Who is she reaching her arms out to? <gasps> Roxanne's baby. He wouldn't climb aboard because he was afraid of flying. We can't go to the beach without my baby, cried Roxanne. He is more important than all the other things. I wouldn't go anywhere without my baby. Roxanne sighed. 
How will we ever get to the beach? Just then, a farmer passed by with his horse and cart. He was on his way to the beach to sell cherries, so they piled aboard Roxanne, the green turtle, the big yellow umbrella, the thick blue book of stories, the orange spotted ball, and of course, her baby. And they had a wonderful time. The end. <laughs> that was a good story. Hey, story time friends. We finally made it out here to the beach. It was a long drive to get here. And unfortunately, I think I got lost. I think I took a wrong turn maybe because I ended up here at the opposite end of the beach where I was supposed to meet Melanie. So I guess I got to walk down, maybe meet her in the middle or something. We'll see. But uh, after that long drive, I'm about beat. I think I'm going to just take a minute to sit here on the shore and relax with the waves. And I just kind of listen to the waves pounding against the shore here and think about that long drive I just took. Oh, sure was stressful sitting in all that traffic. Sure is nice to be here on the beach now. Wonder what I'm gonna do today. Wonder what uh, the day will look like out here on the beach. Mm. Ah! Well, Goose, what what are you what are you doing here, Goose? What are you doing here, Mr. Trace? Uh, thinking real hard? I can see you thinking here on the shore. Uh, yeah, I am. I'm, I'm not actually thinking too hard, Goose. I'm trying to relax. You ever do that? You ever try to relax? Oh, huh. well, uh, some people tell me that all the time. They say, hey, Goose, you really should relax. Maybe I'll try that. Yeah, let's, let's try it together, OK? Let's, let's just listen to the beach. Nice and easy. Isn't that a nice rhythm? Really, uh, really nice to breathe and listen with the with the rhythm. Very relaxing once you once you get the rhythm down. Ha! Goose, what what are you doing? We're we're relax. We're trying to relax. Oh well. You look like you were so relaxed. Uh, I thought I wanted, to, I wanted to share that I was really relaxed too. Oh, well, thanks for sharing that, Goose. I guess um, I guess it's nice that we're, we're both able to relax here, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I, I've never really tried it before. I like it. Hey, you know what else we could, we could try to do is um, let's like, li let's listen to the, to the, to the shore. Let's listen to the waves again and try to let's try to match our breathing to the to the rhythm of the waves. Help us relax. You can see that sometimes Goose needs some help relaxing, so maybe this uh, breathing. Goose, you, you, you scared me. You made me jump. What is it? What is it? Well, I just wanted to let you know that uh, I do breathing all the time. I, I'm a little confused about what this breathing's all about. Well, Goose, this is this is a, a timed breathing. We're trying to time our breathing to the. You know what, Goose? What? I let. You know what? I don't want to bother explaining this to you. Let's let's just uh, go for a walk. How does that sound? Oh, I like walking. You know, I like breathing too, but uh, walking sounds like a lot more fun here at the beach. Yeah, I agree. Let's <laughs> let's take a little walk down there, shall we? I'll, hey, why don't you get go get some, get ahead, and I'll meet up with you. How about that? Okay, I'll see you later. Oh, goose. Well. He's not going to let me get much relaxing, a moment of relaxing here, so we might as well take our walk down the beach to meet Melanie. But that can be relaxing too, because 
one of my favorite things to do on the beach is look for all the types of little critters that live here on the beach. Um, there's big ones, small ones, they're all over the place. You gotta, just gotta know where to look. So, speaking of critters, I found some fish out here. Let's count these fish, shall we? Got a fun little song to sing. Whoop. <laughs> They're wily. Five little fish swimming by the shore, by the shore, by the shore. One got caught, then there were four. Four little fish. Four little fish swimming in the sea, in the sea, in the sea. One got caught, then there were three. Three little fish. Three little fish swimming in the blue, in the blue, in the blue. One got caught, then there were two, two little fish. Two little fish swimming in the sun, in the sun, in the sun. One got caught, then there was one, one little fish. One little fish swimming straight for home, straight for home, straight for home. Decided he would never roam. Smart little fish. You know, when we're in Estes Park, we can't quite get to the beach. I mean, we can go to see the sand at the lake, but, um, but it's kind of hard to get to the beach when we live in Colorado. But that's what's so great about books. Books can transform us into lots of different worlds. And so I'm going to read this last book called Here Comes Ocean. And this is a new book by Meg Fleming and Paola Zucchini. She drew the pictures in this. Let's see what happens in this story. Here Comes Ocean is the title. Sun Beach, Rise Beach, Pale in Hand, Found a Dollar in the Sand. Cool those toes, what next? Who knows? Here comes ocean. Soft beach, warm beach, dig a seat. Something's nibbling on my feet. Look what's nibbling, ouch. Hide those toes, what next? Who knows? Here comes ocean. Salt beach, breeze beach. Look, a track. Pipers chase the water back. That's the name of these birds, pipers. Sink those toes. What next? Who knows? Here comes ocean. Low beach, tide beach, treasure store. Ropey lassos line the shore. Look at that, he's pulling this kelp. Splash those toes, what next? Who knows? Here comes ocean. Loud beach, crash beach, prickly walk, sea star clinging to a rock. Plant those toes, what next? Who knows? Here comes ocean. Oh, look at that tide pool. That would be fun to look at. Oh no, no beach. Better run. Giant wave. Three, two, one. Move those toes. What next? Oh no. <gasps> Too much ocean. Looks like this little one got totally splashed. Slow beach, down beach, sky grows pale, stained glass sailors, purple trail. Hmm, what's that? Dry those toes, what next, who knows? Here comes ocean. Moon beach, night beach, sparkly swish, wish upon night light fish. Looks like the water's glowing, luminescence. Snug those toes, what next? You know, night, night, ocean. Oh, and in the back of this book, it has some words that we can 
There's the seagull. You can go back in the story and find that. And the crab and the sand dollar. There's a shell and a sandpiper feather. And there's the sandpiper. If I moved this, oh, this is in the way. This shows the kelp, the bullwhip kelp. And this is by the wind sailor. I'm not sure what that is. That might be something to investigate and look into. It looked like they were floating on that one page. And that is the end. Oh, that was a cute book. Oh, here's a book about one of my favorite critters, Hermit Crab. He's looking for things too, except he's looking for a house because hermit crabs live in their shell. This book is called, Is This a House for Hermit Crab? by Megan McDonald and illustrated by S.D. Schneider. Oh, I'm sorry, Schindler. Is this a house for hermit crab? Let's find out. Hermit crab was forever growing too big for the house on his back. There's his shell that he lives in. It was time to find a new house. He crawled up out of the water looking for something to hide in, where he would be safe from the prickle pine fish. He stepped along the shore by the sea, in the sand. Scritch, scratch, scritch, scratch. until he came to a rock. Is this a house for a hermit crab? Turning himself around, hermit crab backed his hind legs beneath the rock. The rock would not budge. It was too heavy. So he stepped along the shore by the sea in the sand. Scritch, scratch, scritch, scratch. Until he came to a rusty old tin can. Is this a house for hermit crab? When he tried to walk with the can on his back, it bumped and clunked. It was too noisy. So he stepped along the shore by the sea in the sand. Scritch, scratch, scritch, scratch. Until he came to a piece of driftwood. Is this a house for hermit crab? Hermit crab crawled deep inside the rounded hollow at one end was too dark. Can you see hermit crab inside there? So he stepped along the shore by the sea in the sand. Scritch, scratch, scritch, scratch. Until he came to a small plastic pail. Is this a house for hermit crab? Climbing up toward the rim. Oops, he fell right in. He clawed and he clawed until he climbed back out. It was too deep. So he stepped along the shore by the sea in the sand. Scritch, scratch, scritch, scratch. Until he came to a nice round hole in the sand. Is this a house for hermit crab? He poked his head down into the opening. A huge pair of eyes blinked back at him. Hermit crab shivered as he scurried away from the big fiddler crab peering out of its burrow. It was too crowded. So he stepped along the shore by the sea in the sand. Scritch, scratch, scritch, scratch. Until he came to a fishing net. Is this a house for hermit crab? Poking his claws into the heap, he got tangled and caught. Hermit crab wriggled and wriggled until he found his way out of the net. It had too many holes. So he stepped along the shore by the sea in the sand. Scritch, scratch, scritch, scratch. All of a sudden, a gigantic wave tossed and tumbled pebbles and sand over hermit crab's head. He swirled and whirled with the tide and was washed back out to sea. Whoosh. Sleeker than a shark, the prickle pine fish darted out from its hiding place in the tall seaweed. 
Every spine on its back stood straight as a steeple. Mouth open wide, it headed right for Hermit Crab. Hermit Crab raced across the ocean floor. Scritch, scratch, scratch, scratch. Scurrying behind the first creature he saw. It was a sea snail, and he hoped it would hide him. But the shell was empty. The shell was empty. Hermit Crab scrambled inside as quick as a flash and clamped its claw over the opening in the shell. The prickle pine fish circled the snail shell three times, but he could not catch sight of the crab he had been chasing. He glided off in search of something else to eat. When all seemed still and quiet, Hermit Crab snuggled comfortably down into his new shell. It was not too heavy, not too noisy, not too dark, and not too deep. It was not too crowded and did not have too many holes. At last, Hermit Crab had found a new home and it fit just right. The end. That looks like a much nicer and suitable home for old hermit crab. One of my most favorite things to do when I'm at the beach is to look for shells. Do you like shells? Oh, I found some shells. Let's count them, okay? One, two, three, four, five. Now let's pretend we're the ocean and we're whoosh, going forward and back like waves on a beach, okay? Five little seashells lying on the shore when swoosh went the waves and that left one, two, three, Four. Four little seashells, cozy as can be, when swoosh went the wave. And that left one, two, three. Three little seashells, all pearly and new, when swoosh went the wave. And that left two. Two little seashells, sleeping in the sun, when swoosh went the wave. And that left one. One little seashell left all alone, whispered, shh. So I took it home. You know, seashells are so interesting to look at. And if you have some at home, seashells are um, just one nature object that you can really talk about texture and colors and things like this. If you were here, we would put out a bunch of seashells all around so that we could talk about them. But you know, you could do that with lots of different things. You could do that with pine cones or leaves or things like that. So um, some of the things that you can talk about with your kids are what colors do you see? You know, we can look on the inside of the seashell and we can see mm, kind of an orangey pinky color if that shows up on the camera. And this one's striped. And this one you might talk about the polka dots and you can talk about smooth parts of shells and bumpy parts of shells and really talk about the textures, the colors, what's interesting about them, and just have time to explore, touch, and, um, and just learn more about shells, whether it's the name of the shell or tell a story about how you found the shell. Um, little objects like this, little nature objects, can really give kids an opportunity to use their new vocabulary and um, just a way to connect to and kind of bring a nonfiction uh, side of, well, we think of that with books, but just uh, to your conversations too.
Okay, friends, we got one more book to read down here, and it's also about crabs, but this one's about little crab, not hermit crab. It's called Don't Worry, Little Crab by Chris Houghton. So let's find out what little crab would have to worry about, shall we? Don't worry, little crab. I like the pictures in this book, nice and colorful. Lots of fun shapes. Little crab and very big crab live in a tiny tide pool. Today, they're off to the ocean. This is going to be so great, says little crab. They go tick a tick, tick a tick over the rocks. Splish, splash, splish, splash across the pools. And squelch, squelch, squelch through the slimy, slippery seaweed. I can go anywhere, says little crab. Finally, they get to the very edge. Here we are, says very big crab. The ocean. Oh, says little crab. Sure looks big, doesn't it, compared to little crab. Maybe it's better if we don't go in the ocean, says little crab. Don't worry, says very big crab. It will be okay. But the waves are getting bigger. Look, a huge wave. Hold tight, here it comes. Whoosh! I think we've had enough of the ocean now, says Little Crab. Let's just go a little bit farther, says Very Big Crab. I think you'll like it. But the waves keep getting bigger and bigger. Another one! Hold tight! Here it comes! I don't think I like the ocean, says Little Crab. Maybe we should go home. Don't worry, Little Crab, says Very Big Crab. I'm here. Come, just a few more steps. They almost made it into the ocean. Little Crab takes a step, then another, until, whoa, what's that? Is that some ocean? I'm in the ocean, says Little Crab. <laughs> He's got one little leg in the ocean. But then they see an enormous wave. They must be looking up at it. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Ready? asks Very Big Crab. Little Crab nods. They take a deep breath. Here it comes. Whoosh! Oh, look. They made it underneath the wave. They're really in the ocean now. Gloop, 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 gloop. Down, down, down they go. Look, little crab. Look at all the fish they can see. Everyone comes to say hello. My name is Little Crab, says Little Crab. A lot of nice fish it looks like they're meeting. Oh, it's hard to get these pages. 
They eat delicious seaweed. They run all across the seafloor, and they have a giant game of hide and seek. There's a little crab. Looks like there's another little crab hiding back there. I love the ocean, says little crab. Yes, but it's time to go home now, says very big crab. There's little crab with his new other little crab friends. Looks like a little hermit crab too. What? I really don't want to go home, says little crab. Well, how about we go the long way home, says very big crab. Can we go up this way, asks little crab. That looks like a nice way to go. I think you can go anywhere, says Very Big Crab. And off they went. Well, looks like it took a little bit of nudging to get Little Crab in the ocean. But once he got his toes in, it was well worth it. He didn't even want to go home. Well, I made it all the way down here to the other end of the beach, but it looks like I must have passed Melanie. Maybe we were both looking too hard, concentrating on finding our shapes and our critters, so we, we just had our heads in the sand and we didn't see each other. Well, thanks for hanging out with us anyway, Storytime friends, and we'll see you guys next time.